I just had one of the craziest AI experiences of my life. <laughs> no way. No way, dude. He nailed it, dude. Holy shit, look at that. Dude. This can't be real, guys. This can't be real. In the past couple of weeks, we have found ways to drastically improve ChatGPT's capabilities. The difference is so significant that not only did Sam Altman tweet about it, it's been fun watching the vibes shift on O1 as people learn how to use it. But Greg Brogman, another founding member of OpenAI, also urged people to learn about this. This guy went from saying, I can't emphasize enough how bad ChatGPT newest model is, and the output is bordering gibberish to admitting, sorry, this was my most incorrect take in history. All after learning this approach. And he's not just anyone. Ben is a former human interface designer at Apple, whose whole expertise is human-computer interaction. If he was using ChatGPT wrong, what are the chances that other people just know how to use it without guidance? As you know, the smartest AIs in the world are now the newest OpenAI O series of models. But because they work in a fundamentally different way, if you try to use them like a normal chatbot, they won't be so smart. They might even be worse than the normal GPT-40. The good news is, it's not that complicated. And in this video, we are going to detail how this new approach works and how much it actually improves ChatGPT. So let me tell you about this new approach using one of the most embarrassing stories of my career. About four years ago, there was this huge business consultant in Iran. He was very respected, very influential. The government decided to pay this guy to provide consulting to smaller startups and boost the startup economy in Iran. One of those startups that received the opportunity to talk to this guy was our startup. I prepared for days and finally, it was our time to meet him. And I was really nervous, but I had all of my questions written down. So we engaged in a normal greeting, hi, hi, how you're doing, whatever. And I was so nervous that I just jumped right into the first question. So we have a big problem. We can't divide our work properly. And some people feel they are not compensated enough for their work. And he just looked at me and said, it's none of my business. I was shocked. What did I do wrong? We sat there in awkward silence for like 20 seconds. And then he looked at me and said, young fella, you didn't even tell me what is it that your company do? What is your position in the company? How much of the company do you personally own? How many employees do you have? How many customers do you have? And I just realized, oh my God, I didn't tell him anything. And if he were to answer my original question, it would be the most generic answer that I could find on any blog post on Google. That's the issue with how we normally use ChatGPT now. Over the past two years, we've developed bad habits that fundamentally limit AI's ability to help us. So here's the context for the clip that I showed you at the beginning of the video. I first clearly stated the goal, then I asked for a very specific output, three files, main.py, utils.py, and levels.json that acts as the database. And I specifically told it that I'll take care of the assets if it lets me know what are the names and what are the sizes. Then I wrote a lot of warnings about all the common mistakes that normally game programmers make, like starting to code before planning the entire project. Then handling collisions, which is almost always a tricky part, and camera movement, which is intricate and you should pay attention to, and finally, the context dump that talks about the Mario game and its core mechanics. You can find the full prompt in the description if you want to try it out yourself. I intentionally made the project too big, so O1 can't do it in one go. Then I would show you how to use GPT-40 to complete it. But then this happened. So now we have done all of that and we are gonna put it to test. And here's the moment of truth. I really don't expect it to one shot this one, but if it does, I'm gonna lose my mind. Okay, let me... Okay, here's our story screen. <laughs> no way. No way, dude. Holy shit, look at that. Dude. This can't be real, guys. This can't be real. Did you see that, guys? Did you, did you see that invulnerability period? Did, did you see that blinking? Holy shit. Look at this. Oh my god. Okay, let me finish this. Okay, no double jump, no double jump. I asked for double jump, but okay. Next level. Dude, he nailed it, dude. Look at this, look at... The entire team changed. Holy shit, this can't be real, guys. This can't be real. Okay, let's, let's finish this level as well. Dude, I intentionally left some of the assets... I left out some of the assets for the third level to see if it handles. 
Okay, we fell off, but this is crazy. This is crazy. Okay. So let me point out some crazy stuff that is happening here. First of all, look at the camera movement. It's not fixed in place, but it's not fixed on the character as well. It smoothly follows the character around. It really nailed it. Second, on the third level, I intentionally left out some of the assets. And the model had fallback geometry for everything, so the game just played. Third, keep in mind, the model doesn't see the game. So the fact that it can design a level, that it is actually playable. Like the platforms are in range for the jump. It is really unbelievable. And the other really beautiful thing was the animation. I put all the assets in the folder that the AI asked me to and it just worked. So now I had some time to play around and digest the initial shock. I found three problems. The final output didn't have the double jump. It didn't specify asset size. I just guessed 60 by 60 pixels and it turned out fine. And it had a bug with the ground collisions which I fixed with the help of GPT-40. Now if I want to refine or do minor changes, I just switch to GPT-40 and if I decide to add a major new component like a menu at the beginning or adding 10 more levels or an ability to design my own levels and play them, I'd brief O1 again to write the majority of the code. This isn't just for coding or for O1. It works for all tasks that require reasoning and for all future reasoning models because no model can read our mind. As a bonus, I ran the O1 prompt again to see if it was luck. And it made a different Mario game, this one nailed everything first try. It even had a background and this guy shooting bullets. It doesn't have good animation, but I didn't explicitly ask for animations either, so I guess it's fine. Now let's see some practical examples and templates on how we need to prompt AI models from now on. Here is the basic chart for our new approach. For the new thinking models who act more like agents, you wanna upfront all the context and the goals as opposed to the chat models who we use to interact with and input instructions along the way. I want to emphasize that this doesn't mean we are moving past GPTs. We are going to understand both and then combine them and push ChatGPT as a whole to its limits. There is a key difference between the older GPT models like GPT-3 and GPT-4 and the new O series of models like O1. In a stark contrast with the older models where you started with high and a half-baked idea of what you want so the model helped you refine it, with the O series, it's like you're accepting a new employee. And he'll be as confused as you are if you don't know what is it that you exactly want. When using the O series, you should push as much context as you can into the model. Help it avoid common pitfalls and make it pay attention to the more critical parts. Here is an example of prompting O1 that Greg Brockman shared. This is fairly short and simple, but it's a good template. You want to clearly state what the goal is. It's the alignment problem in action. You need to detail the goal and make sure the AI or the new employee understands the vision, not just the goal. Then you'll need a return format. Then the warnings, like a starting to code before planning the entire project. And finally, the context dump. Instead of dictating how they should do things, focus on clearly explaining what you want along with any helpful information that they might need to succeed. Keep in mind that this is a balance between providing enough context and sufficient freedom to achieve the best results. If you are like most people on a plus subscription, you have a limited number of O1 prompts. Luckily, this new briefing technique helps you reduce your number of interactions by a large margin. Also, instead of typing, you can prepare bullet points. Use the voice memo app and yap as much as you can on the mic. It saves you a lot of time and helps you give the model enough context. Finally, combining the two models. The output of the O1 won't be a complete project. But to refine it, don't prompt O1 again. Change the model from O1 to GPT-40. Now you can go back and forth, fix bugs and do minor changes. Then if you decided a new large expansion like adding a new feature, change the model back to O1 and write another full briefing. Even repeat important parts and let the O1 do its thing. Hope you get to build some amazing stuff using this method. Shout out to Ben and Latent Space for teaching me all of this. My name is Puria and we discuss emerging technologies here. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button and I see you in the next one.